let's start reviewing factoring trinomials. So remember factoring is the reverse process of distribution and distribution allows us to simplify an expression like this one. One way we can do that is to multiply the x in the first set of parentheses by everything in the set of second the second set of parentheses and the three in the first set of parentheses multiplies everything in the second set of parentheses. So when we expand this we get x times x which is x squared th x times negative 2 so that's minus 2x 3 times x is plus 3x and 3 times negative 2 is minus 6. And then we can simplify a little bit further by combining like terms and we get x squared minus 2x plus 3x that combines to plus x minus 6. So this is what we would get if we simplify by expanding this product of two binomials. So each of these is called a binomial x plus 3 and x minus 2 are binomials. The prefix bi means two. Each of these has two terms in it. That's why they're called binomials. The result we got has three terms, so it's called a trinomial. All right. Factoring is going to allow us to reverse this process of distribution so that we could start with a trinomial and then factor it back as a product of binomials. Before we continue, let's just make a couple of observations about where the, the coefficients in our final answer for this problem came from. Where did this minus 6 come from? Well, we got that minus 6 when we multiplied the plus 3 and the minus 2. So this minus 6 was the product of plus 3 and minus 2. Now how about the coefficient in front of the x here? You know, we don't see one written, but we know there's a hidden 1 there. So where did that 1 come from? Well, that one came from when we combined the like terms here that had coefficients of plus 3 and minus 2. When we combine the like terms, we add the coefficients together. So this plus 1 is the sum of plus 3 and minus 2. So we can see that when we multiplied these together, the middle coefficient is just the sum of these numbers and the end coefficient is the product. That's going to help us reverse this process. But I want to point out that that only works out that way because both of these binomials have just an x. If either of them had a coefficient like 2x or 3x then we'd have to do something a little bit more complicated but we're not going to talk about that in this video. We're going to stick to problems where the coefficient in front of the x squared ends up being another hidden number 1. Because that coefficient is a 1, this is called a monic trinomial. Because mono, the prefix mono means 1. Okay. So we're only going to be factoring monic trinomials and we're going to get a product of binomials as the result. So let's see how we could apply the observations we made in that example to reverse this. The idea is I'm going to end up with a product of binomials to factor x squared plus x minus 6. And because this is a monic trinomial, the coefficient of the x squared is 1, that means I can write x and x in the beginning 
of each binomial factor. But then I have to decide what number goes here and what number goes here. How did we come up with those numbers? How did we see that they arise in the previous example? Well, if I call this number A and this number B, then the product A times B has to give us the number on the end, the negative 6. The sum a plus b has to give us the coefficient of x in the middle, which is positive 1. So I need numbers that multiply together to give me negative 6 and add together to give me positive 1. What could work? Well, what kinds of things can I multiply together to get negative 6? Those are factors of negative 6. And we're going to list them here. Uh, I could multiply 6 and negative 1 together, or negative 6 and positive 1, 2 and negative 3. If I multiply those together, I get negative 6, or negative 2 and positive 3. If I multiply those together, I get negative 6. And those are the only integer numbers that I can multiply together to get 6. And when we're factoring like this, we're always hoping things work out as nice integer numbers. So what I need is to pick the pair of numbers here, the factors of negative 6, that also have this property, that when I add them together, I get 1. So I want to look at the sum of those factors. 6 plus negative 1 is 5. That's not what we want. We want the sum to be 1. Negative 6 and positive 1 adds up to negative 5. That's not what we want. 2 and negative 3 add up to negative 1. That's not what we want. Negative 2 and positive 3 add up to 1. That is what we want. I got unlucky here that it was the last thing I checked. A lot of times you'll get to it earlier and then you can stop going through all the possibilities. But this is the one we want. And so I need my numbers for A and B to be negative 2 and positive 3. So when I factor, my final answer is x minus 2 times x plus 3. And you can check with the previous example we just did, because this is that same problem in reverse. All right, let's try this approach on another one. I want to factor x squared minus 7x plus 12. And I already know that when I factor I'm going to want to add together the numbers to get negative 7 and multiply the numbers to get 12. So let's go through the possibilities again in a table. So I want the factors of 12, numbers I can multiply together to get 12. And every time I come up with a possibility, I'm going to look at the sum to see if it gives me the negative 7 I need. So what are the factors of 12? Well, easy things are 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3. And I can check those, but when I add them together, none of them gives me exactly what I'm looking for. I mean, the 7 here that you get by adding the factors 4 and 3 together, that's pretty close, but I don't want a 7, I want a negative 7. Well, I missed some things. I don't just want positive factors, I also want to consider negative factors of 12. Negative 12 times negative 1 also gives me 12. Negative 6 times negative 2 gives me 12. And negative 4 times negative 3 gives me 12. So when I consider those possibilities, the sum of negative 4 and negative 3 does give me what I want. So this is the combination I need. And therefore, I can factor this trinomial as x plus negative 4, which you can just write as x minus 4, and x plus negative 3, or x minus 3. Here's another one. This time, I'm going to multiply together to get positive 4. So I want to look at factors of 4. 
and then analyze for each combination of factors what the sum is. What can I multiply together to get 4? Well, the integer possibilities are 4 and 1, 2 and 2, and as we saw in the last example, we also have to consider the possibility of negative values. So negative 4 and negative 1, negative 2 and negative 2. And if I check the sums for these, 4 plus 1 is 5, 2 plus 2 is 4, negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5, negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. I want a coefficient of negative 4, so I want the factors to have a sum of negative 4. That's right here. And I can see now that when I factor the result I'm looking for, has a minus 2 in both places. So this is x minus 2 times x minus 2. And another way to write that answer, instead of writing the same thing multiplied by itself, I could just write x minus 2 squared. How about x squared minus 9? This one looks a little bit different. This doesn't look like a trinomial a trinomial is supposed to have three terms, and this one only has two. Well, we can rewrite it as a trinomial because there's a hidden middle term here, right? There's a something times x, zero times x. You can think of it as a hidden zero in there. So what am I looking for in this case? I want numbers that will multiply together to give me negative 9 factors of negative 9 and I'm looking for the combination that gives me a sum of 0, this coefficient of x. So let's list our factors of negative 9. Uh, the possibilities are 1 and negative 9, 3 and negative 3, or negative 1 and positive 9. And those are the only integer factors of negative 9. So let's look at the sum. 1 plus 9 is, or 1 plus negative 9 is negative 8. No good. 3 plus negative 3 is 0. Ah, that's what we want. I can stop there because that's what I was looking for. So now I can factor x, x. The first binomial factor will be x plus 3, and the second binomial factor would be x minus 3. And this is exactly the same as if I'd written it in the other order, x minus 3 times x plus 3. That would be equivalent. You can write it either way. 